As the White House backpedals faster than a dyslexic unicyclist, others poured gas on the fire. To protect a president from his own blindness, they even went after soldiers who did serve with honor and distinction. Obama employee at HUD and director decorated war veteran Brandon Friedman tweeted this about Bergdahl's fellow troops. He writes, here's the thing about Bergdahl. What if his platoon was long on psychopaths and short on leadership? See, Bo left because his comrades were murderous fiends. It's not him, it's them. Now, I can't say I blame Brandon entirely for this. In any war movie made after Vietnam, Bo would be the hero. But Brandon quickly apologized, realizing it offended service members, the very people he worked with and admired. But should he have? He just said what many in the administration thinks. After all, it's staffed with Ivy League flax, weaned on snarling academics, brimming with American self-hatred in war movies that always embraced that reoccurring cliche, the gung-ho military head case. I feel for Brandon as a loyal guy who was only trying to help a clueless Obama recover from that boneheaded move in the Rose Garden and save some shred of O's legacy. That was the real mistake, Obama's grandstanding in the garden. You can't paint a turd purple and tell America it's eggplant. Um, the lesson here, as always, Dana, Twitter. Why do you go on Twitter? You work for the government. Nothing good comes from it. Right, and also, it's very difficult to separate maybe what you might have said in private or at a bar or a cocktail table to your friends than what you would say as an official. He's a, uh, he works at the Department of Homeland, I'm sorry, Department of Housing, housing and Urban Development. Right. That they're supposed to deal with housing. I can understand that he's uh, a political appointee that wants to support the president, but if you are wanting to make sure that you don't add to the White House's problems, the best thing you can do is probably keep your tweets to yourself. Yeah. Now, he's a, this guy uh, is a decorated war veteran, which was surprised, I think surprised a lot of people that he would tweet this. Maybe he has experience in dealing with some, some unusual people in, in, the, in the battlefield, but sh should he have done this? Well, it shows that they don't have their messaging pretty tight. I mean, I don't, I don't know many people, Dana, in the Bush administration that would have, have Twitter. take to Twitter <laughs> or just, I mean, if we had had just Twitter, go Blake, make yeah. blanket statements uh, about things that they shouldn't weigh in on. But they've bungled this from the beginning. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this again. I guess their calculus is it's okay for us to go out there and fight against the fellow comrades and question their patriotism and question anyone's patriotism on this decision when from the get-go they should have not had the Rose Garden press ceremony, not done a Sunday show, and if asked about it, it should have been a very brief statement that said the reason we got him back was because of national security interests. Yeah. We thought he may be collaborating with the Taliban because that was the intel that they had, could be possible, and put a rest to it. Even if, Greg, the real motive, which it is, is to close Gitmo and end the war in Afghanistan, at least make it look like you're not going against his fellow soldiers. This White House doesn't care if they're going against these military members. They have no respect for anyone in the military except for a very confirmed deserter, multiple deserter. Oh, my God. You know, I, it's just, you know, I, I think you'd have a better case if you said to me, Juan, the president has made a big show of loving the military at every turn. Done everything. Well, how so? Oh, my gosh. I would you, never you would... say something like that because it's not true. Well, it is true. Oh, the president has made, I, and I think people on this show have questioned whether it's sincere. He's, he's cut, they, he's has cut, he gone he's overboard in this benefits of show. the Department of Defense. Oh, that's not. Look, he's drawn down the military. The There's a sergeant in the Marines Look, who you I, said we're at war. That, that jailed Marine served two tours in Afghanistan. I'm so, he's in Mexico. My, okay, let me move on. Does it matter let me just quickly what country say, he's in? Yes, the guy, we we're not at war with Mexico. He's in the wrong place on the globe. Are okay. we won? Uh, no, we're not. But <laughs> let me just say, I couldn't agree more. I think it's out of line for that man to have tweeted that message. Mm -hmm. And I think it's out of line for the White House to be saying that somehow these soldiers are swift boating burglar. I think that's offensive. Leave it alone. Those soldiers were on the ground. They were there. They have a story to tell. I also think it's offensive when I see people making, and the president said this today, a political football out of this issue. But and he you asked see for this. it. No, he did not. Yes, you he see did. This, you don't have so, a look rose garden blogger. ceremony I want, not I want you to press. see. You see some of these right-wing bloggers. They were calling for Obama to get Bergdahl at any way. Take any risk. Get our man back. What are they saying today? Oh, oh, talking about other soldiers. Obama didn't know he was this. Obama didn't know it. They have every other reason to go after Obama. No, it no, looks like you, you're but... playing a political football game. What do you think, Eric? Is he making here's, a point? Here's what, no, Juan? No. <laughs> <laughs> he talks a lot. Not, nothing I oh, would agree. come close to agree. Um, there, uh, just let me make this one quick point. Something, we're going to move on from the Bergdahl story, but one thing needs to be said before we go. A Taliban commander told Time magazine, 
that they were excited to kidnap more Americans because then they can trade for more, get more detainees. That's something that we said on this show on Monday afternoon that this was going to be one of the fallouts for this horrible trade. And guess what? So they're saying. So the Taliban the watches the five? Yeah. I hope no, I, they <laughs> may, may, maybe they get it in Gitmo data. Maybe they, they get the, the other Gitmo detainees sent it back to the Taliban and say, hey, you hear what the five just said? Kidnap some more Americans. Maybe we can get out of yeah, here. Yeah, straight from the goat's mouth. You know what? Uh, Obama could salvage the whole thing by doing uh, coming back for a press conference and saying, I'd like to thank the Taliban five we released for all that great information that we got yeah. right. to fight terror. Yeah. Those guys' heads would be on a stick exactly. by tomorrow. I love that. That's a good idea. Yeah, it wasn't but my you're idea. Full of good ideas. Nah, I stole that one from a viewer. Thank you. Up next on the five. <laughs>